9 years ago, Tamashi Hiroka made a viral video about why a Pokemon MMO would never, ever be made. That was then, and this is now! With a little help of the gaming industry going to hell, Nintendo's business model changing to adapt to new times and perhaps just a little China, we are fast approaching a world where the Pokemon world is a reality. And who could blame you for wondering why a Pokemon MMO doesn't exist already? It seems like a no-brainer, traveling the world to collect pets is what you're already doing in World of Warcraft instead of touching grass. Well, there are many reasons why this hasn't been the case yet and strangely enough it seems like time is knocking them down one by one. The first obstacle in the way for a Pokemon MMO was actually Nintendo themselves. Yes, the Nintendo of yesteryear would have never accepted such a project. In a nutshell, Nintendo had this idea, especially under Satoru Iwata, that to embark into new markets would destroy the company's identity and iconic nature, make family-friendly games and market them to the first world. That was the plan and anything that deviated from it got thrown out. The idea of a Mario phone game or Pokemon Go was simply unacceptable 9 years ago. That changed. Nintendo now sees the emerging economies and the mobile gaming market as a new horizon to expand to. The rise of the Chinese gaming market as the behemoth we have today meant it was impossible for Nintendo to look the other way anymore, so they caved in. But even if they still refused to get into the juicy PC and mobile market which would still be a fair position to take, there is good news for console users. As much as Nintendo refuses to play the arms race with Xbox and Playstation and they keep producing less powerful systems, the computing power of their consoles is getting to a point where a World of Warcraft style MMO would be possible in them. Some could argue that the Switch is already at this point. Even though a Pokemon MMO is now technologically possible for Nintendo, there is still an old villain around to stop him. Or is it? The titan of its time, World of Warcraft, which controlled 70% of the MMO market at its peak, basically meant that making a competing MMO was essentially pressing the self-destruction button. This is a WoW channel, I don't think I gotta explain to you how WoW is not the titan that it used to be, subscription numbers dropped so low that Blizzard is too ashamed to even show them anymore. And now there is a vacuum of power in the MMO market that games like Final Fantasy XIV are taking hold of, so why not Pokemon 2? Another concern for Nintendo is that a Pokemon MMO would undermine their mainline series, just like it happened to the Warcraft franchise. Business rule number one, never compete against yourself. Actually, Nintendo is kinda facing this problem already due to their ever-growing Pokemon ecosystem and the good news is that they already developed a solution. Complete cross-integration. Pokemon Home is a cloud service that lets you transfer your Pokemon from mainline games to phone games and pretty much any current release of Pokemon imaginable. Nintendo is willing to support games in parallel for a long time now because they know that games as a service is the future and no, I don't mean that in the sense that it will be the best for the players, mind you. You see, a Pokemon MMO wasn't financially viable in the past because they relied on game sales to make their money, and running a game forever is both an extra cost and it would also stop them from selling the new games. Before you say that they should do a subscription-based model instead like WoW, let's be realistic for a minute. The overwhelming majority of the Pokemon player base is kids, and most kids do not have 15 bucks a month to throw into this. That is sole business, homie. EA devised a brilliant monetization strategy anyway, and that, as you know, is called microtransactions. Sell some crap in the game for real money, and most people will not pay a dime for it. But it will be so beyond effective for the top 1% of spoiled kids, aka whales, that the developer will make their money back, sometimes even more so than a subscription game would. Nintendo proved with their Mario Kart phone game that they are not above this anymore. So even if I'm not happy about it, that does mean that a Pokemon MMO is now financially viable for them. There is another barrier though, and that one is parenting. Well, the lack thereof really. Remember, Nintendo is a family-friendly company at all costs. And that means if your new Pokemon game turns into a Call of Duty lobby and the kids begin to discuss European history with period-appropriate vocabulary, all of a sudden it's not gonna be a good look. 
A group of bored housewives might even riot at Congress to burn the entire nation of Japan because America. And as online games become more common even within younger audiences, parents may be more accepting of kids playing these games, but let me warn you, if the last Minecraft update is anything to go by, some big action is gonna be taken to censor the chats of these games. I mean, I cannot use gamer speech in a kids video game, man. Literal 1984, man. It is fair to say that Nintendo will find a way to not go the way of have a hotel. Investigating the site over a period of months, this program has discovered that users, some as young as nine, are bombarded by explicit chat and regularly propositioned to strip. Stre stre one huge issue is that Pokemon has one of the most diverse player bases of any franchise and while that gives them a huge market, that also makes it very hard to market too. MMOs used to be extremely niche, males between 25 to 35 and that was it. It makes perfect sense why Nintendo didn't want to make an MMO 10 years ago as they would have alienated a younger and female audience. But nowadays, games like Final Fantasy XIV got a whole new demographic of players into MMOs. I don't want to keep feeding the meme that Final Fantasy is for the Tumblr demographic, but it is true that the types of people that play it are way different from the ones that played, say, World of Warcraft or EverQuest. And that's good. Pokemon has always had a social component built into it, even back to the link cables and trading, but now high-speed internet is the new link cable. People connect with each other through their phones now, and while I am not a huge fan of mobile games myself, this new emerging market seems like the ideal breeding ground for a game like this to form. Cross-platform play is becoming the industry standard, so in an ideal scenario Nintendo wouldn't lose much from targeting different kinds of people. As a matter of fact, just like with the all two versions of the game model, they could make it in a way so you can only catch certain Pokemon in certain platforms. Think about it, if you want a drill, you gotta get it on the phone and that way you are 24 7 playing the game wherever you go, but if you want a Butterfree, you better get that shiny Nintendo Switch, baby! Before you are excited beyond belief, let me warn you, there is still one big reason that is preventing a Pokemon MMO from being made. As a matter of fact, it is the same reason that a lot of other franchises with similar potential are scared of making an MMO. An MMO is an extremely risky endeavor. You have to spend anywhere from 100 to 300 million dollars just to develop a game that may or may not take off at all. And there is no real guarantee that even a franchise as huge as Pokemon can do that. I mean, I'm sure that there would be a huge spike of people at the start because, I mean, come on, this is Pokemon freaking MMO we're talking about, but whether they will retain an audience over the long term, which is what an MMO relies on to turn a profit, by the way, that depends on a lot of factors, many outside of Nintendo's control. As many of you, I also think that this is definitely a risk worth taking, but as a publicly traded company as Nintendo, Nintendo, taking big risks is usually a big no-no, so I guess only time will tell. And may Arceus strike you down if you do not subscribe right now.